Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Lionel Beasley's short story, Future Cancelled Pepsi Ads. Uh, now, Lionel is a friend. Uh, he was a former office mate when I was getting my master's at the University of Vermont. Um, and this short story is in response to the, I think it was 2017 Pepsi ad uh, in which Pepsi decided almost insanely that it was a good idea to uh, imagine that sharing a Pepsi would resolve the conflicts leading to the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, this was a this was an incredibly bad decision. Uh, the, the, it, it was a commercial made in incredibly bad taste. Basically, as I remember the commercial, the idea was you had Black Lives Matter protesters on one side, militarized police on the other, and they were clearly set for conflict with one another. When Kendall Jenner arrives with Pepsis and hands them out to people, and then everybody's like, oh, we are, we've been brought together by Pepsi the very serious socio-economic and cultural conditions that maintain racial hierarchies in the U.S. and the consistent use of police violence against African Americans is really, you know, uh, Pepsi has solved it. So, uh, I'm going to, I'm basically going to read you the whole short story because it's not super long but i think it's really i think it's really quite funny um so future cancel pepsi ads is in response to that situation this idea that um that somehow pepsi was just going to bridge the gaps between people whose Sociocultural interests and roles in hierarchies of oppression were diametrically opposed. So, this is Future Cancelled Pepsi Ads by Lionel Beasley. The scene a heated demonstration. Bull Connor in Birmingham's finest advance with German shepherds straining their leashes. A group of African American teenagers oppose the police, bravely standing their ground. Enter Kyle Jenner brandishing a Pepsi. She hands the Pepsi to a German Shepherd and smiles. Bull Connor smiles. The German Shepherd smiles. The African-American teens smile. Suddenly, everyone starts dancing. The scene. A quiet riverbank running along, alongside a large steel plant. Henry Clay Frick and a group of Pinkertons disembark from a series of river barges, Winchesters at the ready. The sound of guns being cocked fills the air as a group of striking steel workers aim and prepare to fire. Enter. Kendall Jenner pushing a, barrow, a wheelbarrow containing a crate of Pepsi bottles. She tosses bottles to, to Frick and the Pinkertons who shake them and spray the strikers. The Pepsi spray washes away coke dust, revealing smiling workers with healthy skin and dressed in snazzy red, white, and blue jumpsuits. Suddenly, everyone starts dancing. The scene. An angry mob. The sans-culottes, in their frustration with the privations of life under the Enchant regime, have gathered outside the Bastille. The garrison troops, recently augmented with crack Swiss soldiers, confront members of the mob who storm the courtyard. Enter Kendall Jenner in hot air balloon, piloted by the Montgolfier brothers. The balloon features a large Pepsi logo. She drops two-liter bottles of Pepsi on the assembled crowd. She smiles. The Montgolfier brothers smile. Below, everyone starts dancing. The scene! A walled city rising from the desert. Several thousand crusaders, blessed by Pope Urban II, and dressed in full battle armor, prepare to seize the holy city of Jerusalem for Christendom. Soldiers of the Fatimid Caliphate oppose the infidel, crying out to Allah. Enter! Kendall Jenner, bearing the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is filled with Pepsi. Soldiers of Islam and Christendom alike fall to their knees in prayer. Kendall Jenner passes through their ranks, stopping to anoint each with Pepsi, a process which continues over the course of several hundred subsequent commercial spots. 
In the last spot, timed for Super Bowl 52, everyone dances. The scene, the banks of the Red Sea. Moses leads the children of Israel who are starved and exhausted. They are pursued by Pharaoh Tutmosis of the Third and a detachment of Egyptian cavalrymen riding glittering bronze chariots. Moses, raising his staff, appeals to God for relief in divine, in divine vengeance. Enter Kendall Jenner in a burning bush. She raises her arms and smiles as the Red Sea parts. The Red Sea is actually a vast reservoir of Pepsi. That most of the third smiles, Moses smiles, the burning bush smiles. So I think the satirical element to this is pretty clear and straightforward. Um, and and what we have here is, I, I would say, a on the one hand, a, a sort of analysis of social conflict rooted in um, competing interests, whether those are racial interests in, in racialized society, whether those are hierarchical, or whether those are class interests in a capitalist society, um, whether those are religious divisions, etc., etc. Um, so we have that element where this is critiquing Pepsi's pretense that social divisions are not serious elements structuring people's lives. We've also got a, a satire of capitalism and that sort of fantasy of, oh, if we can all just come together and drink a Pepsi, give your money to the Pepsi Corporation, and social problems disappear. Right. This is a, a fundamental element, a, a fundamental article of faith, I would say, under neoliberal philosophy. Um, this idea that capitalism and the free market are fundamentally capable of resolving social problems, regardless of how serious those social problems are. The reality is that this is complete nonsense, and this is this is the point ultimately that that Lionel is making here is that the world is not set up in such a way that we could all just come together over a Pepsi and realize that our differences aren't that serious after all. And it's an incredibly problematic and insulting proposition on Pepsi's part to suggest that that could happen in the context of the Black Lives Matter movement, right? This idea that, like, oh, if police who regularly murder African Americans, even who have committed no crimes whatsoever, uh, if they just have a Pepsi with some African Americans, and if African Americans who are justifiably upset about ongoing police abuses, inequalities, socioeconomic limitations, etc., etc., that structure U.S. society, if they just have a, a Pepsi with the people who are murdering them, everything will be all right. I mean, again, it was always a horrendous idea for a commercial, and yet Pepsi spent quite a bit of money, I assume, putting it together. And so Beasley is, I think, in a very sophisticated, satirical way, poking fun at both this, this sort of, the way that this commercial ignores the reality of social conflict and the, the capitalist fantasy that if you just give your money to this corporation, things will work out well. 